We know that there are structures that have burned. It was just this thick brown wall of smoke going like over my house. Hopefully it's not days till we know if our house is standing or not. And your heart just breaks for these people. A destructive fire, it's burning near Flagstaff right now, forcing hundreds of people from their homes. The flames moving at a rapid speed and things could get worse out there today. Already at least 24 structures have been destroyed and we can confirm that some of these are people's homes. Right now, this fire is 0% contained. We have team coverage for you working all angles of this story. Jamie Warren is live at the evacuation center. Our meteorologist Iris Hermosillo tracking the fire dangers today, but we do begin with our Allison Rodriguez leading our team coverage from the fire station. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and I just want to let you know I'm live here at the command center where more than 200 firefighters. This is where they're stopping to get ready to battle this fast moving wildfire. The sun finally up and we can start to see the haze over the mountains here through this area. And overnight, you could actually see a little bit of the glow from the wildfire that is burning right now. So I want to get you caught up with what we know so far and the images from this fire. They are unbelievable. So I want to tell you this tunnel fire it began a Sunday afternoon. It was fueled by dry brush and high winds. At least 16,000 acres, the newest numbers they've burned. And the Coconino County Sheriff's are a Department confirming that. They say about two dozen structures they've been destroyed. We don't know exactly how many of those are homes, but from the map, we have seen this fire is active in several neighborhoods. Now, the Coconino County Board of Supervisors, they've declared a state of emergency, which is going to help get a emergency funds to resources. You know, less than a month ago, Governor Doug Ducey gave his annual wildfire outlook, telling Arizonans they can expect this year to be, quote, very extreme. The Forest Service has requested several additional resources to help with this firefight. A type one incident management team has been requested here. They're coming from the Pacific Northwest. They'll take a few days to actually get here, and they handle the most severe and complex of wildfires. So I do want to tell you also that we have learned if resources from other states will be called in to help uh, as well here. Um, and with all industries, we know that there have been staffing shortages, right? So for fire crews, that's no different. Staffing is an issue uh, and that they told us about when we talked about the fire outlook as well. Uh, Governor Ducey did talk about that as well. Uh, we noted and asked about the pay uh, for firefighters. And while he wouldn't address that necessarily directly, he did say that that is part of trying to recruit more fire crews. Uh, here right now. Now, we do want to let you know a Red Cross shelter that's been set up to help those who've been forced out of their homes. That's where our Jamie Warren is live this morning, picking up more of our ABC 15 team coverage. Jamie Warren, good morning to you. Good morning, Allison. So we are outside of Sinagua Middle School. This is where families were told that they could evacuate to. You'll see the Red Cross car behind us here. We haven't had a chance to go inside this morning, but we will be shortly after this live shot. I do want to get to some data, though, that we checked online. So as of this morning, so far, 6,000 acres have burned. The number of structures lost haven't been confirmed exactly by Coconino County, but they estimate about over over 20 structures have burned. More than 250 structures are threatened. 750 homes evacuated and an evacuation shelter, as I mentioned, is set up here at Sanagua Middle School. And I did have the chance to speak with John Paxton this morning. He's a spokesperson with the sheriff's office. He tells me that the high winds are causing quite the challenge for firefighters. Another challenge here, making sure that there are no additional hazards in the area that could potentially add fuel to this fire and unfortunately it could be about 48 hours until families get the go ahead to possibly return to their homes. For now reporting live in Flagstaff, Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. And of course, so many of these families want to go back, yes. but of course it, you never know what you're going to find on that other side as well. And one of the maps is showing mm -hmm. that there are neighborhoods with flames in them. So mm -hmm. we're going to watch this closely. We turn now to our meteorologist Iris Hermosillo for a look at this fire weather. Yeah, and so today the winds will be lighter than yesterday, but they're not dropping completely. And so there is still a heightened risk for wildfires today across North 
northern Arizona specifically. Here's what I'm anticipating as far as fire weather conditions near the Crooks fire and the tunnel fire. That high risk, moderate to high risk will still be a factor across northern Arizona for fires, and that's because wind gusts will still be topping out near 30 miles an hour as those winds coming out of the southwest. So like yesterday, that's going to carry the flames and fan them towards the northeast. It will also carry the smoke towards the northeast. So if you live northeast of these fires, you're going to smell that smoke as it's going to be coming your way. With relative humidity values in those areas, not as low as yesterday, but still in the teens generally through today as temperatures climb into the 60s near Flagstaff and 70s near Prescott. Now today, winds easing up a bit, but they start to pick back up again tomorrow. And tomorrow, we are already back under fire weather watches for areas that were under this alert yesterday too. Now this alert tomorrow, including Flagstaff, areas across Mojave County and that northeast corner of our state too. These could be upgraded to fire weather warnings or red flag warnings. We should know that later today if they are going to be updated and we're going to keep you posted. But in the meantime, know that we've got another round of stronger winds coming our way tomorrow and then again, especially on Friday. For the Valley, here's what we're waking up to. Hazy conditions, dust in the air. That picked up by those winds yesterday. The winds though easing up overnight right now out of the south at six miles an hour. Relative humidity at 19% as our temperature sits at 67 degrees. Today, breezy, but not as windy as yesterday. Gusts will be near 25 miles an hour and temperatures much lower. Yesterday, we came one degree shy of 100. Today, we're going to back away from those triple digits. Our high, 90 degrees. It will get a little warmer. Then we've got a cool down in time for the weekend. I'm going to break down everything you need to know in that full seven day forecast. 606 now and we do have a breaking news traffic alert to tell you about. This is a view of the scene earlier this morning on the Loop 101 southbound near Cactus. This is the Pima Freeway where a pedestrian has died following a crash. It looks like involving that dump truck, that semi there. So DPS still on scene investigating that one and it will impact your morning drive if this is a part of your commute. As I take you to that scene, you see some of the, those delays. Your speed's dropping below 25 miles per hour as you approach this scene in the southbound lanes. If you get on the freeway in this area, maybe just get on at Shea instead to avoid any of those slowdowns. Overall, though, you will be OK getting through that stretch to stay to the left hand side with those two right lanes still blocked. I-17 southbound near Jefferson Street right here at the stack. We have a crash off right and your speeds dropping on the 10 to about 35 miles per hour. Warner Road, we do have a crash at McQueen Road. Keep that in mind just off the freeway in the East Valley. We'll get a check of your desert drive times in just a little bit next. Meantime, let's get to some of our other top stories this morning. New developments in the Lori and Chad Daybell case. The original plan for a joint trial for the couple may not happen now. Lori Daybell choosing to waive her right to a speedy trial. That means her trial could begin as soon as October. The couple facing charges in the deaths of Lori's two children, JJ and Tylee. In court Tuesday, her attorney entered her not guilty pleas for her. 607 now, Governor Doug Ducey and 25 other Republican governors are forming a new border strike force. States will share intelligence and build up resources to fight drug trafficking and human smuggling, and specifically along the Texas and Arizona border with Mexico. Today, ABC 15 is taking a deep dive into mental health with our all day special, Managing the Mind. So what is mental health and why should we care about it? We took those questions to our ABC 15 health insider and licensed psychologist, Dr. Emily Basha. So psychology in general would define mental health as the functioning of one's mental state, their mood, their behaviors, their social functioning, um, even their spiritual health would be included in this. According to Dr. Basha, taking care of your mental health boils down to living a meaningful, purposeful life. What kind of quality of life do you want to live? Only you can define that. Nobody gets to live your life for you. So throughout our newscast today, Dr. Basha will walk us through ways to manage our minds. We'll also talk about breaking the stigma of getting help, no matter your age. All this and more, I'm back in just a few moments and throughout the rest of the day here on ABC 15 Arizona. That's right, because it's okay to not be yes. okay and to ask for help. No, hey, 
609, the question on everyone's minds this morning, how is Devin Booker, oh. the Phoenix Sun star player, leaving in that third quarter last night because of that hamstring injury, right? So we do hope to get an update from the team at some point today. Okay, so we know that Booker did miss several games during the regular season because of a hamstring issue. Before getting hurt, he had an incredible first half, putting up 31 points. Still, the Suns falling to the Pelicans, 125 to 114. That series now tied up one and one as we move into game three, which happens Friday night in New Orleans. So how is the team responding? We'll hear from Coach Monty Williams in our next half hour. Up next, though, here on ABC 15 Mornings, we do continue our focus on managing the mind. I'm going to highlight a special arts program that is helping kids dealing with a lot right now, especially prolonged trauma. Plus, wildfire season getting an early start across Arizona. We continue our live team coverage of the tunnel fire. This is a live look near Flagstaff this morning. Plus, we have brand new information on the Crooks fire, that one burning south of Prescott. And there are traffic alerts associated with that, Nick. We'll talk about that, plus a look at your valley drive times on the I-10 near 43rd Avenue. This is a live view for you of some of that slowdown beginning. So your desert drive times here are straight ahead. It's almost 614, using the healing power of art for a better future when it comes to Arizona kids who have been through so much. It is the mission of a Valley nonprofit paving the path to a lifetime of kindness. At a time when most of us really need mental health support, Free Arts AZ is meeting that need for Maricopa County kids living in group homes and shelters. Children who've experienced traumatic events due to abuse, neglect, or homelessness, um, it can be really difficult to, for that idea of how do I get past this? How do I bounce back? How can I get over this? The focus here, building resilience and hope. And it's working thanks to therapeutic artwork and caring volunteer mentors, adults, these kids can count on and trust. There's a lot of research around putting what they call active skill building or active art making, things like that, that where you're actually doing something physical paired with a relationship that really makes those bonds significantly stronger. The CEO tells me these programs help to heal the effects of toxic stress and trauma for more than 7,000 kids every year. And the numbers show, after participating in Free Arts AZ programs, 99% reported feeling physically and emotionally safe. 97% felt they had the opportunity to express themselves. And the same number of kids said, after going through the program, they felt great about themselves and what they created. You'll see a kid come the first day and they've got their hoodie up and they're like, my staff made me come to this, I don't want to be here. And by the end of the week, they are leading their peers in drumming workshops. They are volunteering to come back the next week. All of this possible thanks to generous donations and well-trained trauma-informed volunteers and alum like Gabby forever changed by this program seven years ago. It, this is literally my happy place. Hesitant at first, then she found peace here. In my head, I'm like, these people are not here to hurt you. They're not here to, to do anything. They're here to love you and care for you and show you different opportunities and show you that there's other people out there that want to be there to help you and care for you as well. She's happily married now and loves spending time helping other kids understand life can and will get better, especially when you have someone to lean on. And research shows it just takes one adult, right, to have that connection with a child to make a huge difference. It's clearly proof that giving back to our community matters. So if you would like to volunteer or maybe learn more about Free Arts AZ, we posted everything you need to know. It's up now, abc15.com slash mental health, along with all of our in-depth coverage from our Managing the Mind special. Time right now is 616. Let's talk temperatures and winds across the state because yesterday both were big factors in our fire risk. It was very warm near 100 in Phoenix and winds were really strong across the state, but those winds have eased up overnight and now we're seeing winds generally below 10 miles an hour in most spots. The exception being Sholo and Bullhead City where those winds are closer to 10 to 20 miles an hour. But as we go through the day today, we're going to see those winds pick up again. They're just not going to be as strong 
strong as they were yesterday because that disturbance that brought the strong winds is starting to move to our northeast. And so as it moves further away, winds are backing off too. Now it's still going to be breezy to at times windy up north and you're going to notice that the strongest winds this afternoon. Here's four o'clock on Futurecast will be across northern, eastern and southeastern Arizona with breezes here in the valley too. Then the winds ease up overnight and then tomorrow they get stronger and the winds are going to pick up even more so on Friday as we track a storm system that'll be moving in. But tomorrow the strongest winds will be in that northwest pocket of our state. So winds today gusting as high as 25 miles an hour in the valley breezy breezy across northern Arizona with gusts as high as 30 miles an hour winds once again coming in out of the southwest. The fire risk not at zero, but it's not as high as yesterday. Now that said, we've got at least a moderate to almost high risk across northern and southeastern Arizona going into tomorrow. You start to see more of those reds across that northern pocket of our state. Again, as winds get stronger, that risk for wildfires goes higher. So for northern Arizona, we are officially under a fire weather watch on Thursday. That does include spots like Flagstaff. It could be upgraded to a fire weather warning like we had in place yesterday, and so I'll keep you posted if that's the case. But relative humidity on Thursday down below 15% with gusts a little stronger up to 35 miles an hour. But look what's happening by Friday. Those winds pick up even more with sustained winds in Flagstaff near 30 miles an hour and gusts that will be as high as 50 miles an hour in Flagstaff on Friday and for the Valley. We're going to get some stronger winds too by then breezy today and tomorrow. But then by Friday, our wind gusts once again, like yesterday as high as 35, maybe even 40 miles an hour on Friday. Now those winds are going up as we track a disturbance and that's going to cool us down even further. We're seeing a drop in temperatures today. Thanks to the first disturbance we tracked yesterday, a high of 90 tomorrow. We're up to 93. Then we're falling to 80 degrees on Friday. It's going to be below normal, but again, windy. Now the winds ease up this weekend. Temperatures will stay in the 80s here in the valley. For northern Arizona, there is a chance for some showers on Friday. Cool temperatures and dry conditions this weekend, then warming up again next week. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. 619, and let's get a check of your desert drive times here on your Wednesday morning. We are in the yellow, close to 30 minutes there, switching over to 30 on the I-10 from the 303 to the mini stack. I love what updates live for us of those developments out there on the road. 12 minutes on the 17 from the 101 to the stack, and the 51 southbound from the 101 to the mini stack. That is 12 minutes. Now, that's the slowing that we're tracking and how long it will take you. This is the major crash that we are actually tracking on the roadway. The Loop 101 southbound Pima near Cactus Road. Your speeds will drop to about 30 miles per hour through this stretch as the right two lanes remain blocked following a deadly pedestrian involved crash that DPS is still investigating. You will be able to get by just a little slow and go. I do want to move to the high country as we continue our coverage of that wildfire. The tunnel fire US 89 north of Flagstaff that is closed in both directions because of this fire. The northbound lanes are closed at mile post 423 and the southbound lanes are closed at milepost 445. We don't know, of course, just yet when that roadway will reopen. We'll continue to monitor this situation for you, too. Well, ahead at 624, we continue our coverage of managing the mind. It's our in-depth look at why so many older adults refuse to talk about their mental well-being and the importance of simply checking in. Plus, hundreds of firefighters are preparing for a long day ahead from Prescott to Flagstaff. Wildfires continue to rage at 630. We have more live team coverage of where the firefight goes from here over the next 12 hours. Then it is OK to ask for help. There's no shame in that at 637 moms and dads. This is for you. We're going to share how to avoid burnout as more parents are learning. It really does take a village to give our kids the best possible future. 624, the stigma surrounding mental health care is one of the reasons older adults are less likely to get treatment. And this morning, our Jamie Warren looks into the numbers, sharing why we just cannot forget about our seniors. Even just checking in on her with a text, it means so much to her that she immediately responds and tells me how I made her day. Wendy Cohen is talking about her experience with the nonprofit Duet, volunteering her time with seniors no longer able to drive. They're lonely um, and they need companionship. Data shows one in four adults 65 and older experiences a mental health problem. And sadly, those 85 and older have the highest suicide rate.
Cohen has heard firsthand the reservations some have about seeking help. Yet another thing in their life that they see declining with, with their physical health. So they are a bit hesitant and we have heard on a few occasions, you know, we just don't talk about that in my family or, you know, we just kind of sweep it under the rug. Shane Watson with Not My Kids says each new generation has become more comfortable talking about their challenges. In silence, those problems get bigger and they get stronger and they get more intense. And I think after seeing that for decades, we realized this isn't working. Which is why it's our duty to check on our loved ones before it's too late. And then make sure they're doing okay, because they likely could use a little bit of um, support, a little bit of help, a little bit of friendship. And let them know it's okay to talk to someone about what they're going through. There's a 24-hour senior hotline that number is at the bottom of your screen. We also have more details about different resources you can use along with this story on ABC15.com. Well, it is tubing time. The Salt River announcing opening day is going to be Saturday, April 30th, starting at 9 a.m. You're going to be able to float down the river for 21 bucks, and that does include the tube rental and the shuttle bus ride and free parking. Next at 630, was it the best highlight of the night? Devin Booker fist bumps a baby. Baby Ozzy here from the little guy's dad talking about what happened after that now viral moment. You know, new parenting is filled with every emotion under the sun, but there is this social stigma that you'll figure it out. So this morning we're mapping out when you should be asking for help, not just for your baby, for yourself. And we found that help for free. I'm Allison Rodriguez live near Flagstaff this morning, getting brand new information about how fire crews plan to tackle the tunnel fire. I'm going to break down those details next. Well, we are certainly talking winds across the state, but lower temperatures too. highs from about 87 in Apache Junction to 90 in Levine and 90 for Phoenix cooler across the state. But we'll talk about how strong the winds are getting over the next few days.